Hi guys, welcome back to Papro vs YouTube channel where curiosity meets the code. Today our topic of discussion will be the majorly used Python libraries everywhere nowadays. So let's get started. What are the contents? Firstly, we have introduction, then we'll see the key advantages using the right, uh, right library, best practices for using Python libraries, then we have important libraries, key characteristics, and then use using python libraries so let's get started firstly what are libraries python libraries are like a pre-written toolboxes filled with powerful functions and modules that you can easily borrow and use in your python programs imagine you are like building something and instead of creating every tool from scratch you can just pop into the library and grab the perfect saw hammer or screwdriver for a job at hand that's essentially what python library offers Next, what are the importance of libraries? Firstly, we have extend Python's functionality. Python is great for general purpose programming, but libraries add specific specialized skills and features it wouldn't have. They let you work with data, build websites, analyze information, control low pods, and much more. Then it also saves time and effort. Instead of coding everything yourself, you can borrow pre-written, tested, and optimized code from libraries. This saves you hours of work and lets you focus on unique logic of your program. And then we have increased code reusability. Libraries prompt code reuse, meaning you can use the same function and modules across the different projects, reducing the redundancy and making your code cleaner and more maintainable. Next, we have access cutting edge tools. Libraries keep up with the latest advantages in various fields, offering you access to sophisticated tools and techniques without needing to be expert in everything. And then we have boost your productivity with libraries you your disposal and you you can write more complex and powerful programs in less time and effort, making you a more efficient and productive Python developer. Next, what is code reusability? Key advantages. The first point is code reusability. So let's get what is code reus reusability. So first, basically, it's a concept of write once and use many times. Library encapsulate commonly used code blocks into reusable functions and classes. You can leverage this pre-written code across multiple projects, saving significant development time and effort. And then we have reduced redundancy, avoid reinventing the wheel for a task like data manipulation, visualization, or web interactions. And then we have libraries provided tested and optimized solutions, streamlining your development processes. Next, we have prompt consistent coding practices. Libraries often adhere to best practices and coding conventions, encouraging you to write cleaner and more maintainable and standardized code. Second one is efficiency. So save time and effort. Using libraries means you don't have to write every line of code from scratch. You can focus on the core logic of your application while relying on libraries to handle common tasks, accelerating development. Second one is benefit from optimization. Libraries are often written by experts and optimized for performance. They can execute tasks more efficiently than code you might write yourself, leading to faster and more responsive applications and then we have reduced error and enhanced reliability libraries are typically well tested and debugged reducing the likelihood of bugs in your code and increasing its overall reliability next we have access to specialized tools expand python's capabilities libraries grant you access to a vast array of specialized tools and functionality beyond Python standard library, this enables you to tackle diverse tasks in domains like data science, which is NumPy, Pandas, Geekit, and machine learning. We can use TensorFlow and PyTorch. For web development, Django and Flask is used, and for NLP, we can use NLTK and SPICY, and for uh, computer vision, we can use OpenCV and many more. Next, we have stay up to date with innovation. Libraries are continuously evolving, incorporating the latest advancements in their respective fields. By using libraries, you can benefit from cutting edge techniques and tools without having to implement them yourself. Next, we have collaboration and community. This leverages collective expertise. Libraries represent a collective knowledge and efforts of many developers, ensuring a high quality code and wealth of resources. 
then we have benefit from community support we have active communities often sound popular libraries providing documentation tutorials forums and assistance when needed fostering learning and collaboration next we have key categories of library so i have given every topic an example of the library so firstly starting with web development we can use django flask request and beautiful so for natural language we have nltk and spacey for automation and system administration we have os paramico and selenium and then for data science and machine learning numpy pandas matplotlib scikit learn and tensorflow and pytorch for data analysis and visualization we have seaborn plotty and brookey so if you want to just take a screenshot and keep it with you to know what exactly will we will be using for each other topic so next we have choosing the right library which is the most difficult part so firstly what are the things to be considered we have project requirements identifying your needs what tasks do you need to need the library to perform such as data analysis or web development or machine learning automation which i have already given in the previous slide so you can take care of those and then we have complexity and scale is your project a simple script or a complex application consider library scalability and learning curve and then we have to consider functionality and features compare the available libraries research libraries addressing your needs and compare their uh, functionalities features and limitation and then we have specificity versus uh, generality some libraries focus on specific tasks example for tensorflow for deep learning while others offer broader functionality like numpy for general purpose or numeric in com computing choose the right one that aligns with your precise needs and third one we have ease of use documentation then we have the learning curve so you our experience level and the library's learning curve extensive documentation with tutorials and examples can be helpful for beginners and then we have the api design evaluate the library api design for intuitives and clarify our uh, functions and classes name logical and easy to understand next the fourth one you should consider the community and support the popularity and adoption choose the library with large and active community this ensures it's easier troubleshooting access to resources and continued development and then we have the documentation quality comprehensive and up to date documentation is crucial for learning and the using the library effectively the fifth one you should consider is performance and efficiency firstly benchmarking if the performance is critical check benchmarkers and reviews to compare library speed and resource usage and second we have memory management and compatibility pay attention to memory management and potential capabilities issues with python versions and operating system now how using python libraries firstly we have to import the library name so using the import statement such as import library name import the entire library allowing you to access its function and class using the library name dot function name or library name dot class name without from uh, without the library prefix then we have from library name import this imports all items but use the with caution and it can clutter the namespace next we have accessing library function so in a function cell we call them a regular python function providing the necessary argument you can take a look at the example and then we have a class which creates objects from them to use their methods and attribute again there is a example which you can go through next we have common tasks with examples so for keeping in mind data analysis with pandas here in the example we have a data frame which is created and we are printing the column age mean to calculate the overall age of the entire column of the data set and then we have visualization also can be done with matplotlib so again we are importing matplotlib as plt given x and y and plotting them with x and y axis and the title given as simple line plot next we have web scraping with beautiful soup so you can see we have firstly imported the required beautiful soup libraries then we have given a 
response requirements again to http.example.com and title file soup.title.txt and print the title. Next, what are the best practices for using Python libraries? So firstly, documentation is your friend. Always start by reading the official document. It's your guide to understanding function classes and best practices. Then we have version capabilities matters. Check the library compatible with your Python version before installing it. Mismatched version can lead to errors and unexpected behavior. And thirdly, we have embraced virtual environments. Use virtual environments to isolate your project dependency from your systems, Python installation and other projects. And then we have testing and debugging are essential to be successful marketers. You should be understanding the life cycle of a product. That's it for today. If you have any queries, please do let me know. If you have learned something from this video, please do like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.